<laughs> it's the weekly feed. I'm Kyle Meredith, and there are certain things in life you think you might not ever be able to save. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Nickel Creek. Again, how's it going, guys? Good. Hey, Sarah, Sean, Chris, it is great to see you guys back because, uh, you know, you guys never closed the door. You never said that we're broken up 100%, but I don't know that any of us really ever believed you. You know, that that was a thing where we were like, oh, I don't know, because because suddenly everybody was doing their own things. And, right. And successfully, too. Well, that's a big part of why we did the Fair Raffle Now tour was to yeah. make room for these other things that, that we wanted to do. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we jumped in wholeheartedly to, to all of our different projects. Yeah. Although I, it was almost like, for a second there, it was almost like when, uh, when Kiss or The Who said, you know, this is our farewell tour, because then it was suddenly like, well, just one more show, or, or here's some with Fiona Apple over here, or, or this or that, and it's like, yeah, all right. Yeah. The Peter out. <laughs> Yeah, Peter the, old, the old Peter out tour. <laughs> it was a it was a good excuse. The farewell for now tour was a really good excuse to do stuff that, yeah, that that was just kind of a little bit more special than than the average tour. I right. think, like we were really thoughtful about who we wanted to go out with, and and um, I don't know, it was just a little bit more of a special occasion because we yeah. toured really heavily for what like the seven years or so. About seven yeah, years, yeah. and um, and it was. It was exhausting, yeah. and uh, that's true. Like never more than, never more than two months off. I'd yeah, say. like so in, we'd be for, for making a record, and then we would tour, and then the record would come out. Then we'd tour more, and we'd, we'd be playing all these songs, and it, yeah, we never really put it down for more than a couple of months. Right. And it's and those, just what we those did. A couple months would often be spent like writing. That. It goes so back it was, to the whole, pretty, it was a pretty yeah. constant project. Yeah, the whole glamour of rock star, and then when you get into the ins and outs, like that's maddening. That's <laughs> amazing that you even survived that. That you liked each other at all after that, you know, <laughs> uh, to go from that. So well I think done. It's a testament to the strength of the collaboration, yeah. um, and that you know, and that was, um, you know, through no great vision of ours, we totally fell into it. Yeah. Um, you know, at, at no point did we make a choice to be in this band together. It was mm -hmm. just kind of. It's an arranged kinda, marriage. Kinda happened. Yeah. No, it wasn't arranged either. It was just, it was we just, just grew up that, together. Yeah. yeah, we grew up together, and at a certain point, we kind of started playing, and we never stopped. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I think that's what that's what the six and a half years off was all about is to actually start making choices. Yeah. You know, first uh, as individuals, and then and then um, as a group again to make that choice to to come back together and make some more music. And and what a comeback it was because the first line we hear from you. Is you know you don't owe me any of your wasted. Oh, I'm, off the, the first yeah, single. Yeah, off of the single. You know that's the first thing we hear, which is a great line just to arrive to re-arrive on. You know, I, I'm not saying it says anything about the band, but I mean maybe it's that you know triumphant beginning to the song and everything, and it -da, and, <laughs> and you punch in. You call the record a dotted line. You know, or, you know yeah, it, it just on and on and on. It's like it almost seems like. So perfect! What a great comeback! You know, I, I, I don't know if you could have planned that better, you know, or, or something like that. It's interesting because all the records that we did before, well, our first two records, we didn't really have any much of a concept. We didn't have, we just had some songs, and you know, we didn't really know what we wanted to do for the covers. It yeah, was like just yeah. slap something, put something together, and watch the fire die. Was, we, there's definitely you know a concept there, um, but then this time again, we we kind of it was a kind of a chance to sort of. Take control and, and think about things and 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 you know like the a dotted line really to us means means something yeah. and and um, yeah it's really nice to have control and be making decisions you know yeah. have a clean clean palette you know uh, I'd almost think though with a reunion sometimes it's like kissing your high school girlfriend you know it's like I kind of remember this it was weird. <laughs> it's like a the, little bit weird it was weird the, the first couple shows I, I describe as it, it felt like I was in a Nickel Creek cover band oh, a little nice. bit yeah, yeah. Um, playing some of those old songs yeah just just figuring out you know where the material that we wrote and or played first 14 years ago yeah. how that fits in who we are now as individual musicians and as a band and you know it just took a couple of shows to to um, just to settle on like oh this is this is who we are now yeah. this is how we can how it all makes sense together and this is how the story continues yeah, how it's relevant yeah. and how yeah how it's relevant was it hard to find the groove though with, with that in mind you know to get back in there was it that kind of awkward playing around or, or is it you know like riding a bike you know as they say it was, it was relatively easy i mean the reason the whole reason we made the record orig originally we were just going to do a, an ep and 25 shows to, to commemorate our 25th year as a band yeah. so we got together in new york at chris's apartment and started writing for the EP and that just went so 
easily and, and naturally. Because we've hung out a lot, you know, mm -hmm. like even, you know, not officially playing shows, but we're still, you know, we hung right. out all the time. And there was never really that, oh, haven't seen you for a long time weirdness, you know? Yeah. So that was already in there. And then when we started writing, it just was really easy and singing seemed to be easier than it, than it had been. Everyone was just, you know, we were all just in different places. And, and um, so the reason this whole thing came about was because it was relatively easy. I mean, it's, it's never, Super easy, but it right, wasn't right, very right. hard. I yeah, yeah, say. you didn't have to think too hard about it. it wasn't we weren't, hard as we as weren't as building a new band from scratch. Right, we had right. a, a whole lot of shorthand and um, and some good starts to songs. And, yeah. and, uh, and it was really satisfying to, to sing together again. So now that you're, you're you're kind of into it and everything, I mean, you first off, you debut on The Tonight Show. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no pressure, right? But, but even with all of that, and kind of with all you said, and, and with everything that's happened in the interim, um, does Nickel Creek, I, it, it, does it have to be the most important thing in your life anymore? I mean, have you guys figured out the dance now where now you can kind of come back in at will whenever you want, but you have solo careers. You just released a solo record. Mm -hmm. Well timed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, but but does does the band have to be the most important thing? In no, life no, it just has to be. It can just be what it is. You know, and that's yeah. that's the beauty of it for us right now. That we don't have to try to make it anything that it's that it's that it doesn't naturally want to be. You know, yeah. we can get our kicks in other areas musically. You know, with, with other configurations, other bands, we can just let Nickel Creek be what it what it wants to be, and that's really fun and freeing. So. Yeah, that's gotta be nice. It's it's um, it's really easy to to foist. Um, uncomplimentary aspects of your musical personality on a project if it's the only thing you've got going on. And, um, no voracious musical appetite can be satisfied by one project. Right. And, um, and I think all of us have huge musical appetites. And, and for the first 18 years of our professional music making careers, we really had Just one project. Push and through one had to go through that. The meat grinder. Yes, yeah, so we would yeah. constantly be bumping up against what we perceived to be, um, you know, weaknesses in yeah. the project. Um, and 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 you know, I think it's human nature to focus on on things that can be improved rather than things that are already good. And um, and I think now that we've established other other. Uh, other wells we can draw yeah. draw from. Um, we're more free to focus on the strengths of this band and to and to come up with with material that, that uh, the band thrives on. Yeah. yeah, there's there's one part of the album, of course, uh, with the the Hayloft cover uh, from Mother Mother. Uh, one of those things where uh, sounds like it was should have always been a nickel. I never would have thought that awesome. though when I heard the original. Like nothing about that said. You know what? That would make a great bluegrass styled song or, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, you guys have had a history with doing that from taking pavement uh, in a time when that was really unheard of. And, and I think that's when everybody started going, who the hell are you guys? What are you guys? You know, and the, the whole genre thing. But you guys have actually had a nice history of bridging what's considered indie now to a more roots based music. It, was there ever a moment though with like I said, Hayloft works so well. Did you guys go through any other songs? Because you know, it's kind of been covers throughout your career. Was mm -hmm. there any other songs where you're like, oh, could we try that? I mean, how do you guys find that one song? Again, a little sparkling gem in a million songs in the world. Right, Chris. Well, yeah. You know, these things they 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 raise their hands. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Um, it becomes pretty pretty apparent that something's gonna work. Um, and that song, my little brother Daniel played for me um, on a road trip that we that we took, and I, I knew I had to do it yeah. in some in some form or another. Um, when I played it for Sean and Sarah, they felt the same way. So and it it just it, it kicked right in, and it worked right away. Yeah, it, I think one thing is. Uh, but you try something that it doesn't work at all. Yeah, you sure. try things that it doesn't <laughs> work at all. Just any good songs that yeah. work in it. Uh, yeah. That way. I want one thing that I think we try to look for is like we did a long time ago. We we did um, Toxic for a, mm -hmm. a long time, mm -hmm. and I think the reason that worked, we listened to it. We kind of we were listening to the parts, and basically the four of us with our bass player, we we were able to like pick out there was the elements of that song were doable, you know. Uh -huh semi-doable for us you know there was like just a, like a, a snare thing that could be you know done by the mandolin there was like a, a little guitar part and then bass could do it. it just seemed like it was the pieces were almost there you know yeah, right um that we had 
So, and that's a certain yeah. kind of cover, like the like with our cover of Toxic, for instance. That's more of a um, that's more of a celebration of the greatness of, of, of the song. Yeah, and, that, and I really I mean that in all sincerity. It's a great Toxic song. Yeah. Yeah. it is a great song. And um, but we wouldn't cut. We wouldn't record Toxic because right. it really is just the tip of the cap. And we're don't not, think I didn't look really, for one when yeah. I first heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Scouring the air. Right, right. So, but where, whereas, you know, I, I feel like there are two different kinds of covers where you really, there's one, I love the song, just want to play it. Yeah, right. And then the other is, I love the song and I feel like I've got something, I've got a unique thing to say about it. And I right. think Haloff falls into that latter category, yeah. which is like, I love this song, um, but I actually feel like I have something to say about it. You know, we as a group, yeah. We, you know, we, we felt like, yeah, you no, know, we've, we've got a unique approach to this thing, we want to record it. And, you know, that's fairly audacious when, when someone's already, you know, they wrote the song and they recorded it. Right. But, but I do think those are kind of the two the two approaches to covering something. I mean, One's an homage, the other is like, actually, yeah, yeah let me get in here and do some work. Yeah. I mean, you've always been a progressive band. I, again, I know, I know in the early years it was kind of figuring out, everybody wants to put a genre on you. Everybody wants to put you in the box. And you guys weren't able to do that. It almost seems like from the very beginning, uh, Nickel Creek was a battle, you know, a battle against critics, a battle against even the fans. Um, I was, uh, I was noticing um, <laughs> on Facebook. That's <laughs> terrible. No, but you know, you ha you have what I'm getting at is you have the fans out there who won't let you be anything else right. than what they heard at the beginning. And as yeah. you come back, you know, as as whatever this record is, the comeback record, or just the next record in the canon. You know, and, and once again, you have all those people that you've built up from the beginning that are like, boo, I can't take a song like Hayloft because it sounds weird. It's and I true. love it that you weren't afraid to call them out. But, um, <laughs> but one what did thing you say? that's been, did I, I don't think I called them. Don't, you mean call them out by just, you just, by just you, doing You it. just explained something in, in the comments, you know, it was like, you know, you can't always just be one thing, right. you know, whatever, you know. Yeah. I think that... Uh, one thing that's been really fun and satisfying about this tour is that um, for the first time in a while, I think a lot of us were feeling at the end of the tour that, that there was this huge pull from the audience to like want to hear those first two records yeah. performed live. And, um, and what's been really satisfying about this tour is to feel the excitement about Why Should the Fire Die, which was our third record, and this record too. And um, to feel the enthusiasm from the audience and the support about from, for this new material that we're most excited about right. because it represents who we are now, um, and to be able to do that as well as to to touch on and to to um, celebrate the old material with them, but um, the fact that they've gone with us even during that whole hiatus, you know, that they've like come with us has been um, really satisfying and and just made it feel like oh this is this is. Uh, this is something we could go with, you yeah. know, that, that, that this is a journey that we're all going to kind of keep in touch with. It's a fantastic record. I love that you guys are back. I love everything you've done, and I hope this isn't the last record. You know, let the dotted line just keep going. Uh, so no, thank thanks. you guys so thanks much for stopping by. Thank you. It's great thanks. to see you guys again. Thank you, Chris.